Hey there you guys and welcome back to PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. Star of episode 10 by popular votes is Isaac Clarke, protagonist of the Dead Space franchise. So let's see what story he has to say. Anyone tracking us? No, not that I can see. And it looks like... Yep, there. Tau Volantis. Ah! What is it? Are you okay? I saw just a flash, but images of... Conflict. A huge battle. Humans. Creatures. Well, whatever it was, we know where the answer to the markers, the necromorphs, to all of this lies. I'm not so sure, Ellie. If you'd seen what I just saw, there was a power there unlike anything we've encountered. How could it not be tied to the markers? Oh, this is a waste of time, Isaac. Everything we know tells us the source of the markers is on Tau Volantis. Yeah, you're probably right. But I can't ignore this. I have to at least see for myself what it's all about. Stay on course. If I can, I'll catch up to you later. We'll make sure you do, Isaac. Okay, I've never played any of the Dead Space games, so I have no idea what the hell they're talking about. No idea what the hell markers are, what the hell Tau Volantis is, but I'm guessing it's a planet. I had no idea that Isaac had such a spectacular pair of tits as a sidekick. I didn't even know he had a sidekick. I thought the story of Dead Space was Isaac was an engineer, got stuck on a ship, and then these weird creatures show up and try to kill him, and he just kills them in incredibly violent ways. I thought it was kind of like aliens, but this, I don't know what the hell this is. Wait, he can fly? He has, like, jet boots or something? Then why the hell would he be walking through an abandoned spaceship when he could just be flying away at, like, mock speed from all these monsters? Very strange. Or maybe he doesn't have that ability in the first games or something. Because this... This Isaac is definitely based more on the one from Dead Space 3, I'm guessing. Because, you know, Dead Space is an EA franchise, and we all know that EA just loves to do advertising. Which is what a lot of people immediately cried out as soon as Isaac was revealed as a DLC character for this game, because it was kind of around the release of Dead Space 3. Like, oh, it's another blatant advertising character, like uh, Raiden and New Dante. So, yeah, people weren't really too happy about that. Honestly, I don't really like this Isaac design very much either. I think his, alt, his other costume, which is based on his Dead Space 1 appearance, looks a lot better. I mean, why the hell is he wearing winter clothes when he's already wearing a full suit of space armor? Shouldn't that protect him against the cold well enough already? I mean, pretty sure it's colder in space than it is on any planet. Also, crap, Big Daddy got a kill already. And I very much like that Big Daddy color scheme. It kind of makes him look like he's golden. Anyway, level 2. Let's out this... First shockwave of some sort. It's pretty decent as far as level 2s go. It's not the best, but it's pretty reliable. It's near instantaneous, and you can combo into it with your down throw. So it's a pretty good one, I'd say. Anyway, Isaac, as far as gameplay goes, is kind of like Radic, kind of like Emmett, projectile heavy character. Not really sure if he has a lot of combo potential, but he definitely has good keep away stuff. His uh, standard gun thing, which is kind of weirdly mapped in my opinion. Most characters have the projectiles on the triangle or circle buttons. Isaac's best projectile spam is on his neutral square, which for most people is just punching. So he doesn't really have any punching moves. Pretty much all he has for that is his side square, which is some kind of weird curb stomp thing. It's pretty cool, but yeah, close range Isaac is not really the best. He can toss out this grenade thing in an upward arc, he's got this... It kind of looks like he's just smacking someone with a gun for his up square. Pretty good up square, by the way, he can combo into his up triangle and up circle. Also, Fat Princess level 2, riding a chicken. I'm guessing that's what Nathan Drake referred to at the end of his arcade mode ending. With the uh, I punched the chicken parts. Anyway, bam. Couple kills. I have no idea what the score is right now. I believe I'm winning, but Fat Princess did get a decent amount of kills with that level 2. So come on, just get one more kill in. Damn it. D 
didn't get to happen, but did I win? Yes, I did. I imagine this was a pretty close. Oh no, five to three. Could have sworn she got four kills with that. Oh well, I won, it's all good. So yeah, Isaac can fly. I guess that kind of makes him like Iron Man or something. It'd be pretty cool. Also, I have absolutely no idea what he looks like underneath his armor. Does he ever take it off in the games? Because in the intro, he was just kind of like walking around his own ship, I presume, with his girlfriend, sidekick, wife, I don't know. So then why the hell was he not still wearing his battle armor? Is he sealed in it or something? Anyway, if we haven't seen this stage before, it's the second DLC stage based on the medieval games where Sir Daniel comes from. It's a pretty uh, pretty standard stage, just big flat square. It, it kind of has a little hill on it, but that doesn't really alter the battle too much. And really what this stage kind of has going on for it is that it will occasionally, like a coffin will burst out of the ground and the statue in the background will zap it or something, and then lots of AP orbs will come flying out. Usually. Can wait, level 1. Nice. For Isaac level 1, he shoots out this projectile thing that stuns enemies, and then you can aim your gun and shoot to kill. So you can just stun the enemy and then kill it with the second shot. But you don't have to do that. You can also just stun one enemy, then turn around or something and shoot another one. However, the one you stun does not get killed if you don't hit it with the second shot. Anyway, third one, Let's see see the stasis shot thing missed and the other one hit, so I did still get a kill. Pretty quick and easy battle. Also, Demos costume from God of War Ghost of Sparta, I like. Good reference. Alright, Sly Cooper, Noriko, and holy shit, that's a scary ass evil coal. Based on the Reapers from Infamous 1. The easiest enemies to kill. I think there was a Reaper costume in Infamous 2 as well, maybe that's where they got it from. No idea where they got the Noriko costume from, though. I don't recall her wearing that in the Heavenly Sword. I don't think she had any sort of alternate costumes in Heavenly Sword. Oh well. Oh, this stage, I don't think we've had this one yet either. Also, I kinda wonder who the hell that dancing robot guy is that kinda looked like Isaac. Anyway, this stage is from Twisted Metal. The same series that Sweet Tooth is from. And I've never played any of the games, but I believe it is like a, a demolition derby kind of thing. You just drive around in vehicles and like attack other people until they're dead. So at least that's what this place screams to me. There's like a racetrack thing going on and there's vehicles racing around and shooting at each other. So yeah, that's kind of what Sweet Tooth does. Pretty sure you never actually get to play as Sweet Tooth in the Twisted Metal games either. You just have him driving his ice cream truck. Yes, he drives an ice cream truck. Anyway. Uh, where was I? Okay, I'm down there. Just trying to get this Noriko away from me. Okay, that's a pretty decent move he has. Isaac also has a flamethrower, but that thing is absolutely pitiful. That is one of the worst moves in the entire game. I think it's his down triangle or something, and he just pulls out this really short range flamethrower and shoots it diagonally down. So really the only place you could ever use that, also do I get, okay two kills. The only place you could ever use that flamethrower thing is on, if you're like standing on a ledge and there's people like below you or something. Or maybe when you're falling down, but then you're probably just better off using his down square. Just the ground pound, which everyone else has. Get out of my hair, Sly. You're being annoying. Ah, oh, crap. Nailed him with a rocket or something, but he did his teleport counter thing. Yeah, Sly can, has a pretty decent amount of counter moves that he can use. Just to kind of make up for the fact that he has no blocking ability. Damn it, Evil Cole. Also, I haven't commented on it. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, come on. Went, like, right in between all three of them. No, Sly, you're not going to get me with your hippo, buddy. Just get away from me. Nice. He did dodge the grenade though, that's a bit of a bummer. Fine, I'll just go to the other two guys. Probably gonna have an easier time killing them anyway because they're bigger targets than Sly. Oh come on, Sly. Jump in front of the gun to save the other two. How noble, but utterly foolish. 
I mean, that evil gold color scheme was pretty kick-ass. It's scary as hell. Alright, up next, the rival confrontation. Isaac's rival is obviously the DLC character that was released alongside him. So, well, I won't tell it yet, you just have to watch the cutscene and see for yourself. Ellie, it's me. I haven't been able to raise you on the communicator since I arrived here. Still, it's important this gets to you. There's a power here unlike any I've seen before. It, it seems to be flowing from a single source. Maybe that's also the source of the markers. Source of the necromorphs of everything that's going on. Hold brother, mortal! You speak of the dead return to life. Not life. Necromorphs are abominations. Living dead. The depths of Hades will not be trespassed by your kind, mortal. Only the gods decide who lives and dies. I know the dangers of men convince their gods. If I'm what stands between you and the rest of civilization, I'll put an end to this now. Okay, so it seems like Isaac has also dealt with some sort of megalomaniac crazy people in the Dead Space games. I thought he just shot these weird undead alien things and dismembered them in horribly violent ways. Anyway, Isaac's rival is Zeus, is uh, the DLC character that was released alongside him. Uh, I'd say as far as the matchup goes, it could, it could go either way. They're pretty evenly matched, I'd say. Because Zeus can pretty much have super armor on like all of his moves. If you're not much of a fighting game guy, super armor is basically the character will still take damage or in this case the opponent will still gain AP but your attack will still go through. Like Zeus, if he's like winding up a punch, I can hit him all I want but the punch will still come through and hit me. So yeah, that's kind of Zeus's thing and it's pretty overpowered in my opinion I mean he can gain AP like like that was one attack he hit me with that gave him nearly 60 AP it's insane anyway time for the hit confirm I talked about down throw into level 2 will always kill pretty helpful also Isaac's throw can reflect projectiles so if Zeus is kinda happy chucking lightning bolts at you just put up a throw shield and he'll get his own thunder right back in his face just bombard him from above, stun him, stun him again, and nice. You can't really keep him stun locked that way, they will flip out. Like do a weird flip out of the stun and your second shot will likely miss if you don't aim it real quick. Anyway, no, no level 1 for you Zeus. Kinda wonder what that costume was based on though. That Zeus really only had one design in the God of War games and I'm pretty sure it's not that one. He's never had the shoulder pads and everything. Although, I I think this one might have been based on his God of War Ascension, like the look the soldiers get when they choose Zeus as their main god or something. I don't know, I've never played the God of War Ascension multiplayer because it just doesn't really seem that appealing to me. I mean, I don't see why the hell they would think of adding multiplayer to God of War, which is clearly a single player franchise. I didn't really like God of War Ascension all that much to begin with. But yeah, I never really invested all that much time into the multiplayer. Anyway, Zeus... Oh shit! Damn it. His level 1 is lightning quick. Excuse the pun there. Anyway, bam, dead. He didn't even try to avoid that one. Also, Zeus's minion is Poseidon. I guess it is the most appropriate one. I mean, who else would Zeus's minion be? I mean, Hades is also a minion, but he's DLC. Athena is Kratos' minion already. I guess Poseidon is then the closest character that remains. Maybe Hermes or Helios or something, but they're not... Poseidon's Zeus's brother. It's a lot more important than Hermes is his son, and I have no idea what Helios is. I think he's not even related. I think he's like an, an uncle or something. Not really sure how the Greek pantheon is put together. Although I did play a shit ton of Age of Mythology back in the day, so I should remember all that stuff. Anyway, let's go, Polygon Bastard. 
Someone said he kind of looked like Knack in the comments of the previous video, and I, I can kind of see that. Maybe that's where they got the idea from. Sort of. Anyway, first up, Sir Daniel. Nice. Might be a problem if he actually pulls out his shield. The AI clearly does not understand how you're supposed to play Sir Daniel. You should always have the shield out. There is no reason not to do that. Because now I can just keep shooting at him all day long. Also, Isaac can also walk forward and backward while he's shooting. He's also pretty good. Stun enemies with your shots and keep approaching, or back away if you feel they're ganging up on you a little too much. Come on. Just get to level 2, I can do the hit confirm. Or I could have tried that. Didn't really work out that well. But I'll be back at level 2 in no time. Especially if I get the axe, because the axe allows you to gain AP like crazy. And people told me that the axe was from some game I've never heard of. Mark of Kiri or something. Never heard of it. No idea what kind of game it is. I'm guessing if the axe comes from that, maybe it's like a hack and slash or something. Maybe I'll have to look into it. See if it's a decent game and be able to track down a copy or something. Add it to my innumerable collection of video games that keeps growing and growing and growing. Gonna need a bigger room if things keep up like this. Alright, Ratchet and Drake. Great. I'm gonna get projectiles up the ass so very hard. Luckily, Isaac can reflect them, so... Screw you guys. I can just send everything right back at him. And of course, then they start doing all sorts of close range things to me. No, Drake. Get away from me. I'll take the axe again. There really are not a lot of items to choose from in this game, are there? I've had the grenade like twice in this fight alone already. Uh, I think there are only about 20 items in this game or something. Really not all that much. I mean, Smash Brothers has, what, like 60, 70 items or something? Shit ton of them. And then I'm pretty sure that's not even, like in Brawl, that's not even all of them. They had items in previous games that they just got rid of for no particular reason. I'm pretty sure, like, the, the red Koopa shell is not in Brawl anymore for some reason. I don't see why not. I mean, there was nothing wrong with it in Melee. Or the, uh... The thing that was, like, the... You throw it and it hovers in midair, and if you hit it, it starts spinning like crazy. I'm pretty sure that thing's not in Brawl either anymore. Anyway, I have no idea what the hell these things in the background are. All I know is they show up on the Twisted Metal stage we fought on earlier. Eventually, after some time, and holy shit, they cover a crap on the ground. I imagine they're less dangerous on the Twisted Metal stage, because that's a lot bigger than this one is. Damn it, Drake, and your barrels... Also, if you hit Drake's barrel with Isaac's reflector throw, the barrel will go absolutely apeshit. It's pretty damn hilarious. I don't know if I actually pull it off in this video. Maybe I should make a separate video on it, but it is absolutely hysterical. The first time I saw that, I went apeshit. Anyway, Drake sitting behind the cover wall is not going to save you from my super. And that item there. I have no idea what that was from, but it was definitely helpful in dealing with Ratchet. Now, get rid of this... Oh, no, I don't think we're done yet. We haven't had all three characters at the same time yet. Alright, bring it on, you guys. Now it's gonna be projectile spam with Sir Daniel up in my face. Lovely. Damn it, even Sir Daniel's... Oh, crap, he pulled out his shield. That's not gonna be good. My ratchet's chucking these robots everywhere. Drake's pulling out the mini gun. And what the hell is that gun? It's like some sort of creature attached to a handle that burps at me? I know the Ratchet and Clank games are generally pretty zany, but that's... That's up there. Alright, come on, step on... Yes, he did indeed step on my landmine. Isaac's landmine is freaking amazing, because if you pretty much hit the mine or any of the blue lights emitting from it, it will explode. A lot better than Sweet Tooth's landmine or Sly's landmine. Yep, Sly has a landmine, apparently. I completely forgot about that when I did his episode. He puts down his hat, and his hat is an explosive or something. That's something they'd want in Al-Qaeda. Explosive, or hats that double as explosives. Anyway, Drake's dead. Stop chucking shit at me, you guys. Freaking boomerang axe. Holy crap. Sir Daniel is not supposed to be a projectile spamming character. Jeez, they are really keeping me in the corner now. Just back off. 
Also, Isaac's down throw also combos into his up triangle and up circle, so it's pretty... As far as throws go, I'd say always go with his down throw. Uh, have I even used his up or side throws in this episode? I think I've used the side throw a couple times. It kind of just really chucks them away really far. Come on, if I can just get to level 2. Yes! Alright, now I have to get him close to me. Get over here, you bastards. Or stay there. I'm not gonna get hit by the spears from those creepy things. Ah, here we go. Perfect opportunity. Bam! Awesome. Alright, Polygon Man, let's wrap this up. You just dive right on the grenade. Did the grenade explode? I didn't think I don't think it did. Nope it didn't. Oh well. He's dead. Isaac Clark is now the PlayStation superstar, even though he's really not. Because I'm pretty sure the Dead Space games have always been multi-platform. Really, the only reason he's in this game is because EA wanted to advertise Dead Space 3. That's honestly how I feel about it. Kind of the same with Raiden and Dante. And I have no idea why the hell Big Daddy is in this. Because he was on Xbox first, so that really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I was beginning to wonder if you'd make it back. For a while I wasn't so sure myself. What'd you find? Any link to the markers? No, nothing like that. No necromorphs, no markers. That's that then. That's not all. There are things out there, stuff you and I haven't even dreamed of. Not all of them bad. I haven't seen much good myself. Neither have you, in case you forgot. What I've seen, what I've gained, is power. The power to do things to... To what? I'm not sure what it can do. One thing, though, I have a feeling it's going to make things a lot more interesting. That was kind of a meh ending. Whatever. Don't forget to vote for next episode's character. Link's in the description. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next episode of PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. See you later. Bye-bye.